haven't had the, I haven't had those, those conversations with her yet. I like John. He's, he seems like he seems like a pretty decent dude, kind of you know, pretty straight shooter, no no BS kind of like you, you can tell. Fairly genuine. So, and the fact that you know he was willing to take time out of his life to put my poor car back together. That was nice. That's good. They've saved me thousands of dollars. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. So you How remember you? us now. Huh? <laughs> yes. Good. Oh, oh yeah. God. You were in Ottawa. That's <laughs> Ottawa. <coughs> they just painted the car Friday, and then the paint won't be okay. set until probably later today. So. Hopefully I'll have the old girl back yeah, this week. Bless so. Lawrence. It looks not too bad. So. Yeah. I can't complain. I'm well taken care of. Yeah. That's you. I wish you were in hell with me. How are you doing? Good. I'm glad you made it. Well, at least two of us came. How's it going?
you. It's good uh, again to be here in the house of the Lord to, to worship Him and thank Him for His love and mercy. And those are the four things that need to be in our hearts and mind <coughs> all year. Hope, peace, joy, and love. Everything given by Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, today we celebrate in the Christian Church the third Sunday after the Epiphany. And we follow the order of service that's been printed for this occasion. A few announcements. I uh, think there are not new announcements. Uh, everything has done. We have said in the past. I just want to thank all those who are serving in, in, in the church this morning. Uh, thank you. And God bless you. Morning, you <laughs> Remember those who have responsibility in different, different committees that they need to work with their report for 2023, report. And the due date is Sunday, February the 4th. Mm -hmm. And send it to Fred Werner, our chair at FLC at Rogers So, I'm working on that. Job. I'm working with my report. Many things before I go to a world country mm -hmm. in February. So, for two weeks. I will remember you for sure. I will keep you in my heart. And, and honestly, I'll say that. Really. Uh, and God bless you. And I know that the weather here is not going to be so nice. But over there, it's going to be okay. But uh, I'll have to come back. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's good, I guess, <coughs> to be here in the house of the Lord. Let us uh, begin our worship service this morning. And let us give a piece of Christ to us. We continue with the open again. For Christ, our true and only solution. <clears throat> Here in the Word of God, we are called to confess our sin, trusting in the one true God who, who is faithful and just and who will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us have a moment of silence to meditate on those sins that we have committed against God and against our neighbor. Though Jonah was reluctant, when the Lord spoke to him the first time, he spoke to Jonah a second time and told him, Go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. As you, o Lord, have given us the message of the gospel, we have been reluctant to go and bring you truth and grace to all people. For this we seek your forgiveness. Paul reminds the people of God, the appointed time has grown very short. The present form of this world is passing away. As you, o Lord, have given us each day and hold all time in your hands, we have not used our time wisely. For this we seek your forgiveness. In today's gospel, Jesus called to Simon and Andrew, Follow me, and I will make you become fisher of men. Immediately they dropped their nets and followed him. As, As you, o Lord, have called us to follow you, we have instead sinned against you and God's word indeed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. For this we seek your forgiveness. And dear Christian friends, even to the evil Ninevites, God showed his mercy upon their repentance. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Jesus proclaimed to the people, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Though we deserve his present and eternal punishment, God has relented by sending his Son to bear our sin and to be our Savior. Christ has taken our punishment on the cross, paid the price of our sins through his perfect life and sacrificial death, and for his sake forgive us all our sins. As a call, an ordained servant of the world. I announce the grace of God to all of you. In thy stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our entry. <clears throat> From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needed from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and with the princes of his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. You may be seated, we continue with the hymn of praise.
Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infir infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word. The Old Testament reading for this third Sunday after the Epiphany comes from the book of the prophet Jonah. We'll look at this morning uh, selected verses from chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. Of course, this is um, a rather famous story. We, we, we know this story well from back when we were this tall and maybe less. We, we, we know that, that story of Jonah disobeying God and ending up in a big storm and uh, getting swallowed up by the huge fish in three days, and we, we know all of that. And this is kind of the culmination of all of that, as uh, he's dumped out on shore and then gets a second chance to do what God asked him to do. So that's where we pick up the story this morning, Jonah chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he, that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson for this morning comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7. And we'll just be looking at uh, verses 29 through 31. And the theme of this is faithful living with time given. <clears throat> Paul writes, this is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none. And those who mourn as though they were not mourning. And those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing. And those who buy as though they had no goods. And those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, you o Lord. Lord. Jesus calls the first disciples. Please rise to hear the Gospel. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the Gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. <coughs> and Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were in their boat, mending their, the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants 
and follow him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Christ. Let us now confess our Christian faith, speaking the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, God light, 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 very God of very God, begotten not made, made in one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us on the cross of He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sent to the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to glory to judge all the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who the Father and the Son together in his worship and glorify, who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and the will of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And is here to continue with the ceremony. Of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locust and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. When he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open, opening, opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. Here ends the text for our meditation this morning. Here in this text, tell us about the baptism of Jesus. And, and, and we are going to meditate on why he was baptized. If he was the Son of God, and he was sinless. And also, what benefits do we have? What benefits do we have in our own baptism? So that was the, the text for our meditations this morning. Dear Christian believers, when Jesus, the Savior of the world, was baptized, you heard that the heavens were open wide. And a voice came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove. And the most beautiful words were spoken. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. <coughs> now, that was something to behold. But then, this was not just anybody. This was Jesus. I have baptized a few people over the years. And there is one here that we recently was baptized. That's over there. <laughs> but you know, when there is a baptism, I've never seen anything like that happen. Just think what happened in our own baptism. The heaven did not rip open. There was no dog. Baptism is a beautiful thing, <clears throat> but they are usually not that exciting. They are kind of normal. <clears throat> One baptism is kind of like all the other baptism. Baptism is a very simple thing. It is common, fleshy, and very human. It is not accompanied by the sky being torn open and the Holy Spirit sweeping down feathers and all. We often look at a baptism and think, it is a nice ceremony. It is nice to take pictures with the family and have a big meal on a Sunday afternoon. <coughs> but it is really hard to believe that anything special or miraculous is really happening there. The baby does not reverently go back to the pew with hands folded. The baby does not silently speak the Lord's Prayer after the baptismal water is wiped from his forehead. The baby does not confess with a clear and loud voice the words of the Nicene Creed. Usually, he cannot talk or walk or anything else apart from all that baby style stuff, like eat, sleep, cry, and fill the diaper. <laughs> I have never noticed a baby act any better or differently after the baptism than before. The child still gets mom and dad up in the middle of the night. It still demands enormous amounts of attention and is still busy with that diaper business. And it gets worse. He or she becomes actively willful and disobedient. He or she screams. They yell. He says, 
You are not the boss of me. He sins. There is really very little reason to think that child has faith at all because there is certainly no evidence of it. Our text today is different from all we know from the baptisms we have seen around here. With Jesus, it is not hard to know that something, something important is happening. This is one of the very few times that the Holy Trinity is clearly present. The Heavenly Father speaks from, from above. The Holy Spirit descends as a dove, and Jesus is standing at the Jordan River. You have got all the exciting stuff happening with Jesus, but when you, each of you, your children, your brother, your sister, when they were baptized, it was kind of ordinary. Your eyes could not see what was really going on. <coughs> One reason we are tempted to deny the reality of the baptism is because we cannot immediately see what it is. Faith is not seen, but heard. Consider the Nicene Creed that we just confess, and we confess it enough here including the Apostle Creed and the Athanasian Creed that we do it once a year. You confess one baptism for the remission of sins. You confess this in the third paragraph, paragraph the article about the Holy Spirit. But how is the Spirit involved in your baptism? The answer is that the one baptism of the Creed if the one baptism of today's text, you are, you are baptized into Christ. It is his baptism that you receive. It is because the Spirit descended on him in his baptism that Peter later preaches that in baptism you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you could read this, what I'm telling you, in Acts chapter 2, verse, <coughs> verse 38 to 41. It's a promise to all of us, including children. Friends, you receive the Lord's baptism. Not only has Jesus sanctified all waters by his baptism, but he has done it for you, for each of you. Consider what John the baptizer says of Jesus just before baptizing him. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. <clears throat> Dear Christian friends, in your baptism, your sins are washed away. In Christ's baptism, he takes them up. He bursts them, carries them to the cross and dies there because of them. And the words from Heavenly Father are spoken and heard. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Wonderful words. It's good to hear those words. But there is more, because those words as well is for us. God's beloved Son burst the sin of the world and received the wrath it deserves. God's anger is turned aside from you and focused on the Son. You are forgiven. The sin that Christ has borne in his baptism is gone forever. So now, <clears throat> consider your baptism. When the baptismal water washed you, you received the baptism that Christ himself received. The Father now speaks the words to you that he originally spoke to Jesus. You are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. You, you, you are baptized into Christ. And as many of you as are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 
other version says, clothed on Christ. That's what Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. The Father does not see you, the daughter of baptism, you, the despiser of his gift. No, you are baptized. When he looks at you, he sees you, his beloved Son in whom he is well pleased. He sees Christ, our Lord. All his deeds are seen in you. All his righteousness is yours by your baptism into his death. All his life is yours by your baptism into his resurrection. It still makes no sense to your eyes. And in this life, it always will be that way. Your eyes see a baby getting wet. The water does not seem any different than the water from a lake or river or from a kitchen sink out of the, of the tub. But your ears, no differently. Your ears, not your eyes, are the organ of faith. It is a true baptism. It is water filled with God's word. The Lord's word is a spirit and life and wash in this spirit water. You are begotten of the Father. That's why he speaks to you. Your ears hear the Father's words and believe them. I am a child of God by my baptism. Yes, Christian friends, believe it. Keep it in your heart. You are the Father's child, His beloved child. And He will keep every promise He has made to you in Christ through your baptism. And you know, Satan does not want you to believe it. But you may loudly sing to him many hymns to tell him otherwise. No. I'm just going to mention him, verse 1 from him, 593. See this wonder in the making. God himself, this child is taken as a lamb safe in his keeping. He is to be awake or sleeping. Martin Luther says in his large catechism that the Lord gives so many and so great gifts in baptism that we could spend our entire lives praising God for them and never run out of things to say. In the Lord's baptism, He has taken up your sin and He carries it in His own body. He will carry it into the wilderness and be tempted by the devil. Satan will try to persuade the Lord to cast your sin aside, to give it back to you. Satan will try to turn Jesus away from the way of the cross. Satan wants your, your sins to drag you down to hell. He does not want God to deal with them. He does not want Jesus to forgive them all your sins. But Jesus has said that it is fitting for him to fulfill all righteousness and so he has fulfilled it. He has placed himself under the law and has redeemed those who are under the law. Not only has he suffered, died, and felt the burden of God's wrath in your place, but he has fulfilled every precept of God's law. In our baptism, we are clothed with Christ. His every keeping of the Lord's command is credited to us. Every leper he cleansed, every blind man whose sight was restored, every grieving person he comforted, he did this all for us. In the Lord's baptism, he set aside what is by nature his. 
ignore what is due him by the fact that he is the eternal Son of God. He made himself nothing, taking on the very form of a slave. He takes your sins. He takes your death. He destroys them on a cross, on a mountain called Golgotha. You are baptized into his death. All of the benefits that he won for you on the cross are yours in your baptism. You are baptized into the Lord's resurrection. The life he lives is yours. Now and forevermore. Your eternal salvation does not depend on you now. And it never will. It is a done deal. You are. Each of you are the Father's beloved, and you, he is well pleased. Amen. We continue collecting the offering. I'm going to be singing the hymn, In Thou, in thou but trust in God to guide thee. to hear our prayers and to answer them according to your will. In this season of Epiphany, where the light shines on our Savior, manifested as the Word made flesh, continue to reveal to us through your Word the mercy and grace found in Jesus Christ alone. Arise and shine. For our, our light, light has come. come. As you work, as you work your will and send the salvation message through your people. We are sometimes asked to go where we'd rather not go. Though not to Nineveh like Jonah, we have been called by the working of your spirit to go and make disciples of all nations. Grant to us a confident and bold faith to live as your witnesses to the end of the earth, beginning in our homes, our church and community, and among, among all our neighbors in this world. Soften the hearts of the hard-hearted and open the minds of the close-minded that all may come to repentance 
and know you as the one true God who sent his Son into the world to redeem the world. Arise and shine, for our light, light has come. come. As the present world is passing away and time is short, we see the brokenness and results of sin in our daily lives. For those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, affirm to them your promises of peace in your time as Christ has overcome the world. Point us all to your continued presence and assure us that Jesus is victor over anything that we might fear. In your good time, come and make all things new. Arise and shine, for our light has come. As Jesus called his disciples to become fishers of men, they responded immediately to drop their nets and follow. Give us such an urgency to also hear and heed the call and to follow in faith where Christ leads. As we do not know the hour of your return, give an, an eagerness to our lives as faithful stewards of all we have been given with time, treasures, and abilities, that we use them to your glory and for the sake of others. Arise and shine. For our light has come. But you still come to us in our time of need. You come in the body and blood of our Savior, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Equip us for the continual journey through our days that we remain firm in faith and bear fruit that will last until you call us home. Arise and shine. For our light has come. We pray, O oh Lord, we pray for those who are homebound, in hospitals, recovering from surgery, facing chronic pain or long-term health problems, and all who suffer as a result of living in a fallen world. Especially we pray for Susan, for Dorothy, for Jean and Anna, for Francis, for Anne and Mike, for Rainer and Marianne, for Mary, for Ritva and Marcos, for Lisette and family, for Barbara, for Geraldine, for March, for Starsha, for Carl and Sandra, for Pastor Saulo and his pregnant wife Kira, for Pastor Gerald and his wife Doreen, for Lunda and for Pastor Ron, and also for members of faith in London who are dealing with health problems and need healing. We pray also for those we name in our hearts and minds. That God will grant mercy and perseverance, as well as healing according to his good and gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all the families of this congregation, especially we remember Ken and Sharon. We remember Greg. Lord, Susan and John, and for Franco and Betty, that our Lord keeps them safe and with health, and they shine the light of Christ to those who are around them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We pray for those nations in the world who are facing wars and social unrest, that our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the true King of peace, bring unity to these troubled nations and his glorious peace reign in every heart and dispel all darkness and evil. That he protects the dignity of every human life and replace hate with his love. Also that he give wisdom to world leaders and free them from selfish ambitions and eliminate all violence and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting your mercy through your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created. And out of perfect love, send your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin 
and be our Savior. As you turn your wrath away from the people of Nineveh, through their repentance, you have turned your wrath away from us through the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of His body and His blood on the cross. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the sins, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Yes. Dear friends in Christ, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done,
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve your body and soul to life everlasting. Heart in peace. Please rise, we continue with our post communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith over you, in the fervent love toward one another. <coughs> through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Herald Sound, the Note of Judgment. And I will go faith because I have a baptism of that faith. They can't have to be before eleven. God bless you.
What do you think? Like a homeless lover. I have to do it all over again, or what? Are you doing? I mean, when you were standing up here, I could do it all over again. They have a lot of space. There's two space gears that they put at the back. They ask me for permission. This is going to, to uh, it just, I got the numbers in for Tom Friday. They, 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 and that's in Sarnia. They, apparently they, uh, because so it would take longer. Their battery powered only, and they can't, they can't run them with the weeks, so it won't be in the cell.